Hey guys, this is Ray with Double R Diesel. Welcome back to the channel and the shop. I hope each and every one of you are doing well. Hope you had a great week. Guys, I apologize for not being uh, as consistent as maybe you'd like to see me here on this channel, but I've been busy. But regardless, I wanted to share with you guys some really big news that was announced this week. Um, other channels have already touched on it. I'm just now getting around to talking about it. But the big news is the EPA has just issued some new guidance regarding death fluid um, and particularly D rates that happen when the death system fails on your truck or your tractor or your stationary engine, whatever the case may be. Um, guys, let me back up a second and bring uh, uh, light to the situation that we all know that if any component of the emission systems on our trucks or our tractors with a modern day diesel engine in it, if any component fails, then the engine will either do one or two things very quickly. And that's either if it's an on-road vehicle, the speed will be limited to five miles per hour max, or if it is a tractor or a stationary engine, the engine will be limited to idle speed only very quickly if it runs out of diff, if it has a problem with the diff system, or for that matter, if it has a problem with the EGR system or the DPF. So, going back to the news this week, the EPA has issued guidance on diesel exhaust fluid and diff systems. So, I'll put some articles in the uh, the links for some articles straight from the EPA website in the video description below. Um, one here is titled at Iowa State Fair, EPA Administrator Zeldman announces diesel exhaust fluid death fix. So guys, why is this coming to light? Well, according to the article and according to what I've also heard Lee Zeldman say in an interview, is that he has heard the complaints of farmers, truckers, equipment operators, just average American citizens who have diesel powered vehicles about um, vehicles being limited or derated um, based upon a failure in the death system. Um, and the failure could be, you know, a bad sensor, a clogged death injector, um, bad death itself, or just simply not filling the tank back up when it, you know, goes empty. Regardless, either way, if there's a problem and the truck's tractor engine's computer system senses that, it's going to derate it and basically shut it down to very low speed or an idle. Um, and the EPA, the administration now within the EPA has taken note of that and they're proposing some new guidance. Now this is merely guidance. This is not law, um, but this article goes in and talks about motor coaches, heavy duty trucks, which is your big rigs, heavy duty pickups, light duty cars and non-road vehicles and it gives the current standards and the proposed standards for death system failure and the D rates associated with it. So breaking it down here quickly, it talks about motor coaches. So as of right now, if you have a diff system failure within four hours, you're limited to five miles per hour max. Under the new guidance, after 3,000 miles or 40 engine run hour times post a death system failure, you get a 10% only torque reduction. If you continue to drive without fixing your death system and you go past 10,500 miles with a death failure or 200 engine run hours, you are limited to 50 miles per hour. It's a big change. Heavy duty trucks or big rigs. Um, right now, if you have a death failure within four, miles per, uh, within four hours, you are limited to five miles per hour max speed. Not good if you're trying to haul commerce or make a living up and down the road and you have a problem and you can't get it fixed. So they're proposing after 650 miles post failure or uh, 80, I think this is, they got it listed back here. After 80 engine run hours, you get a 15% torque reduction. Um, if you go 4,200 miles or 80 hours, then you are limited to a 30% torque reduction. If you go 8,400 miles finally or 160 engine run hours, you are limited to 25 miles per hour. So 
that's very significant versus the current four hours, five miles per hour standard. So that gives you time to try to get a load off or to your destination and schedule a repair. Heavy duty pickups, light duty cars. Um, right now, four hours post failure, you're limited to five miles per hour. We all know that with these truck pickups. Um, the new the new proposal is after 4,200 miles post death system failure or 80 engine run hours, you are limited to 45 miles per hour. And non road engines, right now, if you go four hours post death system failure, you are limited to idle speed only. Uh, under the new regulations, uh, after 36 engine run hours, you get a 25% torque reduction. After 100 hours, you get a 50% torque reduction. So this is all significant in the fact that instead of within four hours you being shut down completely, you've got opportunity to keep running your truck or your tractor or whatever to finish the job, get to where you need to go, and schedule a repair in a timely manner. That is huge. That's a big break. This is a step in the right direction. Now, is this what everybody wants to hear? Mm -hmm. Might not be. You know, a lot of us want to hear that we've got the green light to remove emission systems. Um, that's yet to be determined, but there is some other information in this week's announcements that basically clues you in that will let you know that it's going to be a requirement for all diesel engines to have some sort of emissions control. Now, why do I say that? Well, under this proposal, the EPA says by your model 2027, these new D rate standards should be standard equipment from as far as programming goes from the factory. So by year 2027, your models, manufacturers of tractors, trucks, pickups, whatever, has to have these new guidance for D rates and def system failures by your model 2027. So that tells you that the EPA is still planning on emission systems still being in place come 2027 and beyond. Um, and I've never thought that the EPA would give the green light to new vehicles, new equipment coming off the assembly line with zero emissions reduction equipment on it whatsoever. Um, guys, you know, outside of our community, the general public would never put up with a smelly diesel or a diesel blowing black smoke out in the public. Not anymore. I know that's the way it was years ago, but now things have changed in public perception and the vast majority of Americans would, if they seen a truck puking black smoke or, you know, got a strong odor to it, they would oppose it. And our lawmakers love their cushiony jobs and they're not going to agree to just yank the emissions off everything and let them come from the factory unrestricted because that would be political suicide for them. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Now, going back to the endangerment finding, if they remove that, I think that could give a green light to possibly legalizing some deletes under some certain circumstances, but not all. I'm still a proponent for legalized deletes for a vehicle or a tractor or a stationary engine after the emission systems on that vehicle or engine has reached its useful life or beyond its warranty, okay? If you got to fork out thousands of dollars to, you know, rebuild, replace the emission systems on these vehicles or engines, um, and it's, you know, an old, you know, setup, I think, you know, we should have the option to delete at that point. I'm hopeful that that comes into, you know, reality. Um, only time will tell there, but you know, still watch this um, proposal to remove the endangerment finding. Please take action. Um, I'll post another link in the video description below to where you can visit the EPA's website, make your opinion, you know, right, you know, send in a written statement uh, saying, you know, what you would like to see happen. I please, I want you to do so. That's the only way things will actually change. It's people complaining that's brought this new proposal on deaf systems into reality. And we all know that there's more to the problem other than the diesel exhaust fluid component. You've got EGRs that fail, you got DPS that fail. There needs to be more, okay, at the very least. So keep on them, make your petitions known. Now what I found interesting in this one of these articles here, 
um, was what the EPA says. So, the EPA says, let's see if I can find it, right here it says, when it talks about um, making software updates for existing vehicles right now to change the D-rate status, it says right here, by law, the EPA cannot mandate fuel fixes for in-use vehicles, non-road equipment, which is why the agency is issuing voluntary guidance to manufacturers on system modifications to reduce D rates. So the EPA is saying they can't make manufacturers change the software on um, existing vehicles that have already been built. They're only saying by year model 2027 that they have to change it. As far as getting an update, a software update that changes these D rate status, the EPA says we can't mandate it, which I think is quite interesting that they admit by law they can't mandate well can they mandate what's going on has been going on now i mean you really open up a you know a, a can of worms there but that's what they say so it's not going to be you're going to get a recall for your truck or your tractor and it's going to go in for a software update to get these new standards you might not ever see it so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out you know does it give um the aftermarket like me to be able to go in and do such a software update to just make you know change the d-rate status that would be you know great if we could do that only time will tell but it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out but guys uh again please make your petitions known to the government as far as the endangerment finding thing um, make sure you let them know how you feel about it. That's the only way things are going to change any at all. But as always, guys, I appreciate your following. I appreciate you um, visiting my channel, watching the videos. Um, it's going to get interesting as far as the channel goes. I'm going to do some more truck content here so shortly. Um, there's going to be some new stuff here on the channel. And I'm going to be shifting gears a little bit. I'm going to try to take some of my knowledge as far as owning a diesel vehicle, maintaining a diesel vehicle, what to do, what not to do, things to look out for, and put it in my YouTube channel for the person who may be just getting a diesel truck or whatever for the first time. So stay tuned for that, guys. As always, thank you for following along. God bless each and every one of you, and we will see you again real soon.